Why are more and more black influencers recommending real estate investing to their community? I mean, have you noticed? I mean, is this a good idea or are they setting people up for failure? The answer just might shock you. But before we begin, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because I post cool stuff like this each and every week and you don't wanna miss it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Matt Terrio. I am CEO of Epic Real Estate, where I show people how to invest in real estate with an emphasis on retiring early or just retiring period at some point for that matter. But uh, let's get straight to the point today. On Instagram, I follow a few different hashtags that help me meet new people, learn new things, and just keep my finger on the pulse of my business. And two of those hashtags that I follow, real estate investor and hashtag real estate investing. And uh, over the last several months, I've been noticing a trend. Now through those hashtags, I'm seeing more and more and more black influencers promoting real estate investing to their community, such as DJ Envy, one of the three hosts of the syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club, NBA great, Charlie Villanueva, who's educating his followers through a series of posts, hashtag asset police. And rapper T.I. recently, in a blog post featured on hiphopdx.com, urged people to ditch their Cartier watches and ditch their Louis Vuitton swag to buy property instead. Now, some professional and personal acquaintances and friends of mine, like Max Maxwell and Jamel Gibbs and, and Nasser El Arabi and Chris Haskins and Jay Massey are and have been championing real estate investing for years. And then just this week, Kimberly Klasik, representing Baltimore, running for Congress, she made news when she shared her proposal for nonviolent drug dealers to receive amnesty for one year, leave the street life behind them, and invest their cash to flip Baltimore's 17,000 vacant homes and then distribute them through a rent-to-own program empowering the people of Baltimore to become property owners. So is this trend of promoting real estate investing to the black community a good idea? Or is it destined to fail? Well, from an idealist perspective, I think it's a great idea. From a pragmatic perspective, I think it's an even better idea. And here's what I mean. You see, in a society that really suffers from an abundance of people with platforms, pointing out the problems that we have as a country. I mean, we have no shortage of those. And we grossly lack people with platforms that are willing and able and enthusiastic about suggesting viable solutions for the country. Now, my idealistic mind likes this a lot. Don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. That, that's where I operate from. Personally, this feels really, really good. Now, the pragmatist in me likes this even more because real estate is a solution that can actually work and cause the positive change the country is starving for. Not just in the long run either, but in the short term as well. You know, a real estate investor mindset followed by correlate action can impact a person's present. I mean, just like that. And when a group of people follow the same action, now you can impact a community. And when communities follow the same actions, now you can create legacy. Here's how I see it right or wrong. It's how I see it at this moment in time. I'm not an expert on the world's challenges by any means. The subject of racism, however, it dominates mainstream headlines and airwaves. I mean, it's an issue for sure. What doesn't get as much attention though is something I think is as big, perhaps it's an even bigger issue, or perhaps it's an equal issue or the same issue, just commonly and unknowingly this term along with racism are referenced interchangeably, they're used interchangeably, and that is classism. Classism is a differential treatment based on a social class or perceived social class. And what predominantly determines one's social class in our society is money. Money is important to deal with and operate within a classist society. Further, we live in a society of where money serves us in a way that nothing else does. Nothing replaces it the way that it serves us. It puts the food in our stomachs. It puts the clothes on our backs. It puts the roofs over our heads. It pays the doctor bills. And it allows us to do all of those things for the people that we love and are responsible for. In short, Money is important in the society of which we all live. Money is necessary for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, things that we all want for ourselves. And real estate very well may put a big dent in, if not evaporate entirely, 
the social issues we're dealing with as a society at the moment. Because it's real estate that presents the opportunity of financial prosperity for the average person like nothing else available to the average person. It is really the final frontier where the average person has a legitimate shot at creating epic wealth. Wealth today, wealth tomorrow, and wealth for your future generations. I'm talking legacy here. And that's a bold statement, I know. In real estate, it's risky, isn't it? And you need money, right? I mean, maybe this is a little bit of a stretch. I mean, how can this idea of investing in real estate actually work? Can it? Well, let's look at that. With regard to risk, real estate has produced more wealth for more people than any other investment class or any other industry. So if it's risky, you could deduce that every other option the average person has is riskier. But you do know plenty of people that have lost their shirt investing in real estate, right? Or at least you've heard about the many that have. I mean, I get it, certainly. There are financial graveyards across the country littered with real estate investor carnage. I'm not refuting that. But let me show you how most of them ended up there so that you don't. I mean, these real estate landmines. I mean, these real estate landmines are much easier to sidestep than you might think. To illustrate this, I'm gonna use what I call the ROI matrix. It represents the four profit centers, the four primary profit centers of real estate. And up here in the top left, you have appreciation. This is what most people think of when considering the idea of making money in real estate the anticipation of its increase in value, of which is as close to a guarantee that you can get with an investment. But it's in the short-term timing of that appreciation where people have lost and still can lose big. The real estate collapse of 2008 is example enough. Appreciation is not the investing cake that most think it is. It's the icing. It's yours for the taking, but you're playing with fire if you try to time it. So buy, hold, and just let it happen. It will happen. When Will Rogers said, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait, he knew exactly what he was talking about. Now, a slightly more sophisticated real estate investor will look more toward the second profit center, cash flow. This is the income that real estate can produce. And it's here where financial independence first happens. It's where the term mailbox money comes from. The type of money that lands in your mailbox each and every month, sometimes with, but mostly without your direct involvement. And the key to winning in this quadrant is good property management. If you know a disgruntled landlord that swears they'll never be a landlord again, and you don't have to look far to find one, by the way, they're, they're all over the place. You're gonna wanna know though, that it wasn't the real estate that was risky, but rather the person managing it. I mean, it's sad to me when I hear former landlords say, I'll never do that again. I mean, if you have a bad experience, and you likely will. Don't walk away from certain wealth with the wrong lesson. Real estate is safe. It's the people that are risky. Now, the third quadrant of the ROI matrix, depreciation and deductions. Depreciation in real estate is an allowance that the government gives a property owner in the tax code to compensate for the normal wear and tear a property is gonna experience. And when it's a rental property, in the eyes of the tax code, you are a business owner of which is entitled to the same types of deductions all business owners are entitled to. Now, most people fail to acknowledge this profit center because it's not actual money that comes into you, but it is money that does not go out in the form of a smaller tax bill. Now, whether this quadrant excites you or not, understand it indeed represents a measurable return on your real estate investments. The more money you make in real estate, however, the more this quadrant will excite you when tax season arrives each year. Now the fourth quadrant of the ROI matrix, of which is the most commonly misunderstood or even unknown, it's my favorite actually, and it's the quadrant that can completely transform generational wealth for a family, for a community, for an entire culture. This is the prize. Amortization. Amortization is the paying down of the debt used to purchase a property. And it's here that makes real estate the viable and powerful solution the influencers I mentioned earlier are recommending that it can be. You see, each month, your tenant pays you for the use of your property. With that money, you make your loan payment, you pay any expenses associated with the property, and then you get to keep what's left over. That's the cash flow up here in quadrant two. But by way of you making the loan payment, you are paying down the debt, but understand it's not you that's paying it down. Although it may feel like it, you're not. 
It's your tenant's money that's paying it down for you. It's through amortization where you make the transition from landlord to land baron. If you like the way that sounds, do me a favor and smash the like button for me. Hold on, it gets better. The ability to leverage other people's money in real estate is available to the average person like no other investment. And it's the use of leverage in real estate that multiplies the return of the ROI matrix collectively three to four times. What that means is your $1 invested in real estate performs as if it were three to four dollars invested in traditional recommendations by Wall Street. But wait, what if I don't have the credit score to get a bank loan? What if I don't have the money to buy a property? Well, those were my concerns once also, and not too long ago either. At 40 years old, I was living in a friend's walk-in closet with a negative bank account. That wasn't that long ago. And what I learned during that time was, and what I wanna pass on to you is, it's never a money problem but merely an idea problem. So I'll give you some ideas on how to get started. Step one, invest in yourself. Whether you invest with your wallet or you invest with your time, invest in your education. Because there are no bad real estate investors, just uneducated ones. If you have the means, I highly recommend a coach or a mentor. In addition to investing in real estate, that's what I do now. I help people that are ready to help themselves. And I mentioned earlier several of my associates as well. Max Maxwell, Chris Haskins, Jamel Gibbs, Nasser El Arabi, Jay Massey, just to name a few. There are plenty of us out there ready and willing to help. And if you're short on the means to hire one of these trainers, they all have YouTube channels loaded with free information. And I've linked all of their channels below in the comment section. Step two. Move at the speed of instruction. That's a quote I borrowed more than a, a decade ago from Jay Massey. Travel as far as you can see, and when you get there, you will see further. It was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, you don't need to see the whole staircase to take the first step. So learn a little, do a little. Learn a little, do a little. That's the fastest way. And as slow as it may feel sometimes, you're still running laps around the person that's sitting on the couch. Besides, you can't steer a parked car. Move at the speed of instruction. Step three, buy and hold. You see, you can get rich flipping properties, but you get wealthy holding them. Now it's debated who originally said this, but it doesn't really matter. And it goes like this. It goes, learn from other people's mistakes for you won't be here long enough to make them all on your own. And I mentioned that quote because when you ask real estate investors with 20 or more years experience what they would do differently if they had to do it all over again, you'd be hard pressed to find one that doesn't wish they would have bought more and sold less. There's a reason Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world. His favorite holding period is forever. Listen, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness in this world requires a freedom of finances. And the shortest and most certain path to financial freedom for the average person is through income producing real estate. And to get real estate, you must start. Anyone can do this. Real estate does not discriminate. Anyone can do this. But most people won't, and there lies the opportunity. So bravo to all of those that recommend it, those that teach it, endorse it, and embrace it. If you found this video useful, there's a good chance you know someone else who would as well. When their name comes to mind, please share it with them. Peace, health, blessings, and abundance to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.